Hi everyone, and welcome back to my series on how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. Now it's time to begin looking at cameras. In this episode, I will show you how to make a camera that follows the player around. Before we add a camera, we need a bigger world the player can explore. So I'm quickly making one here. I also add a collision shape to some rocks, so they can be used as bounds around the edge of the world. Ok, so the first camera type I will show you how to make is the type that follows the player around, but also stays within the bounds of the world. We start by adding a camera to D node as a child to our player node. The camera will automatically follow its parent around. If we test our game now, we can see that this is true. The camera follows the player, but it follows it a bit too far. We don't want to see this grey background outside our world. We want to limit where the camera moves. We can fix this by changing the limit properties on our camera. I usually keep the top and left sides of my world at the zero axis. So we set both the left limit and the top limit to zero. The world I have created here is 30 tiles wide and 18 tiles high, and the size of the tiles is 16 by 16. So I set the right limit to 30 times 16 and the bottom limit to 18 times 16. Ok, now let's test our game again. We can see that the camera is now limited like we wanted. But what if we change the world at a later point? Then these limits are no longer correct. Changing the limits manually each time we change the world can not only be tedious, but could also lead to bugs if we forget to change it or use the wrong values for the limits. An alternative to setting the limits manually after each change to the size of the world in our tile map is to set it in a script. First, let's change the name of our camera to follow cam. And then we add a new script to it. To set the limits correctly, we need to know the width and the height of the world in our tile map. So we need to have access to the tile map node. I use an exported variable for this. Make sure to specify that the type should be a tile map. Exported variables can be set in the inspector menu. We can then either click and drag the tile map to set it, or simply just click where it says Assign and choose the correct node from the scene. We want to set the limits in our ready function. First, we call the getUsedRect function on our tile map and store the result in a new variable. This function returns a rectangle enclosing the used tiles in the tile map, including all the layers. I'm calling this new variable mapRect. The tile map also has a property called cell quadrant size. This is the width and height of the base tiles in our map. The rectangle result I got and stored in my mapRect variable has a property called size. The size is here given as the number of tiles. By multiplying the number of tiles with the size of each tile, we can then get the total size of our world. And we then use this to set the right limit and the bottom limit. When we test our game, we can see that the camera limits are set correctly. We can also try to change the world in our tile map again. And when we then test again, we can confirm that the limits are updating automatically. So now we have a working camera that follows the player around. The camera node also has a position smoothing functionality that you can enable in the inspector menu. I'm honestly not a big fan of this solution for pixel art games. I think a custom smoothing function might work better. But every game is different, so feel free to experiment with this smoothing if you like. If you have enabled position smoothing, you can also enable smoothing when reaching the limits. And you can also try to experiment with different smoothing speeds.
I feel this is a good place to stop for now. I will show you in another video how to make a camera that moves like this when the player moves outside the screen. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you want more content like this. Bye!